Hi tea timers. So same old afternoon blend today. Um, and we're heading into the weekend, so that's cozy. So I wanted to share something, well, exciting to me with you guys today. Um, I got a, a email from my editor about my new manuscript. So I just, um, I wanted to read it to you. Because, you know, like that, that the, my new manuscript that's going to come out next summer, it was really a challenging one for me because I was writing it and then I had to stop to write that script for Lionsgate and then I was going back and then the rewrites came in for Lionsgate and so it was back and forth, back and forth. And finally, I finished with that project and um, just was able to finish up the manuscript, but I sent it off. I worked really hard and also with all that was going on with um, being in quarantine and all of that, I just, it was, it was a bit of a, like, can I get my head and getting my head into it and putting the worry aside in. And so anyway, so I got this, so I just wanted to, I, I would show you on my phone, but I'm shooting on my phone. So I wrote it down. So um, she wrote, hi Meg, I've done a first read through of the manuscript and it's a wonderful romantic suspense. And then she put an exclamation mark <laughs> and she said, there is such a compelling mix of suspense and romantic tension. You're in really good shape with the first draft. I'll have the line edits to you by the second half of August, which it's like really soon. So I'm really working hard on the, on the new book so that I have a really good chunk under my belt before I have to go into the edits of the old book. Because it's weird. Like same thing when I was shooting movies or when... I'm, whatever I'm working on, that's what I'm on. But sometimes I'll have people come up to me in the airport and they'll quote lines to me from, I guess, one of my films. <laughs> and I, I don't know them. I know my lines. I memorize my whole script. And then I shoot it. And then once I've shot it, it goes out of my head. Because otherwise I'd have all these movies and all these stories just in there. But it's a little embarrassing sometimes because sometimes people know my stuff better than I do because I do it and then poop, I'm off onto something else. Not poop, right? <laughs> like, poop, I'm off onto something else. Oh, so anyway, she said, second half of August, I'm excited to spend a little more time with these characters because I think they're just terrific together. <laughs> and then she said, okay, so we've got to come up with title, cover art, send me ideas, which is, I'm the worst at titles. I always spend hours and hours and hours thinking up like, okay, what about this title? What about that title? What about this title? And then, and then um, lots of times they never use it. Like with Solace Island, they used the title, but that's because I'd already done it with this title, so that was it. But Cliff's Edge, I called that, so Cliff's Edge, I called this Bloodlust. Well, Bloodlust, that sounds like a, oh, it's upside down. Bloodlust sounds like it's a different type of film, like it's vampires and stuff, which is not. There was just a painter who liked to paint in um, with blood, uh, with human, with his victim's blood. So, um, oh, but that doesn't sound very cozy. There's a really cozy love story. So they, so they then came up with the Cliff's Edge. And then I had another, now what did I have? I can't remember with Hidden Cove. I had a different title as well. Oh, I can't remember what it was. But then because the other two had sort of, um, place titles with which had to do with solace island so then with that one then we they said well let's keep it in the theme which i didn't even know you do in the theme of places and so i um i looked through my manuscript and i pulled out all the places that might be a good title or all the you know that i mentioned in the book and then we just settled on hidden cove so i'm going to spend the next i don't know week free time after I finish my writing thinking up like what I think is a really awesome kick-ass title for the new book yeah <laughs> we are gonna use it <laughs> but at least I'll have a few options to offer them but maybe and this one's hard because it's Mary in the um in the third book in the Hidden Cove book it's her story but she's not on Solace Island so I can't use a Solace Island name because she's not there, she left. And it takes place in New York, and then there's some in Vegas, and there's some in New York. So it's like, um, no, and Los Angeles. Did I say New York twice? Probably, it's morning. Um, I've got, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna wear my pajamas all day. I think I'm gonna write, unless it gets too hot, because then flannel might be uncomfortable. But some days I have where I'll just wear my pajamas all day, I'll write. 
I'll wear my pajamas. Then when I finish writing, I take them off, take my shower, put on fresh pajamas, and then steal my pajamas. My poor husband. <laughs> um, oh, 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 you know what else really exciting happened to me yesterday? So I was trying to get, because, you know, I'm in a new place. So I was trying to sort out the writing room. And um, what I didn't know when we got this place is I thought, oh, wow, there's a, there's a little um, desk area here that I can just sit down and write. All I need is a chair. I'll take one of the kitchen chairs. It's short. I should have sat there. It's The desk is um, smaller than... So I was, and then the chairs, unfortunately, now I don't know if the person before was um, smaller than me who had the, the room or if the kitchen chairs are too tall, but I spent a good portion of yesterday kitchen chairs. And then finally I found an outdoor chair, that, the patio chair, that was maybe an inch or two shorter than the kitchen chair because they're lower slung so that I could go in. But then the rail thing that pulls out of the desk, that pulled out too low. And so I had to try to write with my legs like this and then type in trying to type like this, but hunched over like this. And I had to put the screen up on my box of Catan. Catan's a board game for those of you who don't know. And I really enjoy Catan once I made my husband take the burglar out because the robber will go to, um, can steal and block you. But once once we took the robber out and then when you land on, when you get a knight, then you just get to draw a free card from the bank. It works really well because there's abundance for everybody. Um, my husband got Monopoly. I'm going all over the place. <laughs> my husband bought a Monopoly because he thought that was fun, but he doesn't like playing with me because I don't like getting Monopolies because I'm so scared of, I don't want to bankrupt somebody and I don't want to be bankrupted. So if we can just go around accumulating things and nobody has a thing and we, we just get more money and we get to, you know, we pay our rent, fine, that's, the, that's, a, that's what you do. And you just go out and do your thing and go around and we get more stuff. And then when we have the properties, we just both get rich. Like that, to me, is the way to do it. But he finds it kind of boring. <laughs> just sailing around the board giving rent out, earning rent, giving more rent out, earning more rent. It, to me, it seems like a good deal. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you. So what exciting happened to me is, okay, drum roll. I had a Zoom with um, my, one of my favorite authors of all time, Jane Ann Krentz. So those of you who... Um, who know me know that Jane's always been, I've been reading her for decades. She writes under Jane Ann Krentz. She writes under Jane Castle. She writes under Amanda Quick. Her newest book, Amanda Quick book is, what is it called? Close Up, Close Up, that's out now and it takes place in the 1930s. Now Jane writes romantic suspense, but it's, um, it's safe romantic suspense. It never gets too gruesome or scary. Hi again. Um, so what happened is uh, I got caught out. So my husband promises that he'll be able to cut this to the other one because I was in the middle of a sentence. And um, so I'll, I'll just finish this up. So um, I was talking about, oh, I was talking about Jane Ann Krentz. <laughs> Whenever I say Jane Ann Krentz, you could probably just feel the happiness come out of me because she is a wonderful, wonderful person. She is, I've been reading her for decades. I love her books. I love her Jane Ann Krentz. I love her Amanda Quick and I love her Jane Castle. I love every manifestation that she writes in. Um, she's just comfort food for me. And then this time, it's like, I really want comfort food. So I read, I read her new books that come out, but I'm also rereading her old books, sort of like, oh, oh, it's scary outside. I need some macaroni and cheese. Well, so then I'll get that. Or, oh, I need some cookies. And that's, that's what Jane is to me. So I'm, I've become friends with her. And I'll tell you the story some other time. I'll have to remember because it's kind of a long-winded story because I'm long-winded. <laughs> so I'll tell you the story about the first time I met her. Um, maybe I'll do that next, next tea time. But anyway, we've become friends. And um, 
she's just so generous and so kind and she's given me lots of advice with my writing and she's just just been wonderful so she invited me <clears throat> yes Jane and Chris invited me to do a zoom with a couple of her friends and her friends I, now I don't know what I don't know if I said this before but are Christine Dodd who writes um she has this new one strangers oh what was it dang nabbit let me find it here I wrote it down because I haven't okay so I knew that Jane was friends with Christine and Dodd so I'm like oh I should get her books but then I'd, I'd go on her books and then they look scary and you know me and scary right so I'd be like oh oh but she writes romantic suspense which is what I write about and I mean my goodness I have like deranged killers in my books too but but I know like like with Jane she writes romantic suspense as well and she has you know kill, bad guys in her books but you always feel safe with her because you always know that there's going to be a little bit but it's not going to be where you aren't going to be able to sleep I mean you'll want to keep reading the pages but you won't sleep and that's what I try to do I try to do it so it's it's got a little bit of scary to keep you turn on the pages but it's not so scary that you know you're going to be you know harmed <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that you know because Jane and Christina they go out a lot together so I'm sure that hers are that way as well but I always get nervous starting a new romantic suspense author because I never know if I'm gonna be like teeth chattering and the covers pulled up and not be able to sleep like have scenes of yikes going through me so I um but now I'm gonna now I'm gonna get I'm gonna get her book because now I know her so now I'm gonna click and buy it um or when I go to the bookstores I've been ordering from the bookstores too but this is too important because now I've met her so I want to read it right away so I'll do it on my e-reader so her book that's out is strangers she knows and it's a cape uh a cape charade uh, book the third one and it was an Amazon best book of the month and then the other person I met who was is one of Jane's friends is um Susan Elizabeth Phillips who's a ginormous author of contemporary romance and I because I have you know like you get authors and you read all their books so you have your favorite authors and you just go to them 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 and then you read everything that they've written and their backlist and everything well she's gonna be one of those so um, I purchased hers last night so I'm gonna be starting to read it at it's my bribe after I finish working today because she is so nice I really liked her she's just she's just I, I I just really liked her so um I'll probably be reading all of her books and you know you'll probably be hearing about them and we're gonna do they're gonna do Jane and also um uh, Susan Elizabeth Phillips is gonna are going to do a FaceTime live with me which I've never done because um FaceTime I'm terrible at it <laughs> like, uh, but anyway um like uh Susan said gotta pull on your big girl pants so I'm gonna pull on my big girl pants and and do uh learn how to work this thing so that's about it I've got um it was really exciting um I just love the romance community I just I just love it when I was doing the literary books you'd go you'd go to these things you know you'd go to these and and there were nice people but but sometimes it was like um, a lot of, you know, uh, well, I can't even say, uh, can you say dick measuring? Well, anyway, it was a lot of that. I guess you can say it because I said it. Um, so anyway, there, there was a lot of, you know, people being big and making you feel small. But in, in, in this community, it's like, it's like everybody helps lift everybody else up. Not everybody, but the ones that I really love to. And um I just uh, there's a, such a generosity that makes me feel blessed to be a part of it so um, anyway I hope Dawn can cut this together have a good weekend you guys happy tea time and um, I'll see you on Tuesday bye bye whoops I, I waved with my finger like this bye bye like no you don't but I wasn't I was trying to wave and turn off the thing so bye